Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and today we're going to revisit the dash. Okay, so you saw me working on these uh, trim panels the uh, last episode, and I'm gonna leave them for now because I've uh, decided that I'm gonna mount these inertia reels. Instead of mounting them up high on the C-pillar, I'm actually gonna mount them down here uh, on the wheel arch and that means I need to uh, weld a plate in behind with a captive nut and I don't have any nuts that are the um, the right size for the seat belt bolts and today is Australia Day public holiday so nothing's open so I'm going to leave that for today and um, I'm going to get back into working on the dash. So my first job here as you saw a couple of weeks ago I checked out my uh, heater core and it um, it doesn't appear to leak except for this valve. And I managed to uh, get online uh, and I found a, uh, a genuine Nissan uh, replacement heater valve. Uh, I actually tried to get it through Nissan Australia and they wanted over $300 for it. Um, this one, I managed to get a new one just from a uh, random eBay seller for $100. So um, much, much more uh, realistic. So I'm just going to swap this out now and then um, we can put this back in the car. So those of you who were watching a couple of weeks ago when I was repairing this dash, there's just a, uh, a few nicks and bits and pieces that I'm not super happy with. So I'm gonna go over it again, give another sand. I've got another tin of um, this uh, the body texture bumper spray that, uh, that gives it that, uh, that texture that I'm looking for. So I'm gonna go through, sand this all up, do any other little tiny repairs, give it another coat or two and um, see if I can make it look a little bit better again. Okay, I'm much happier with the repairs I've done on that now. Um, I'm gonna sit that aside and I'm gonna go back over and start reassembling the front of this car. to me making a rookie error um, I put the latches back on the bonnet and I was just about to close it when I remembered to put in the cable um, if I hadn't put in the cable it would have been a real pig to get it open again because I can't pop it I'd have to get get it up get underneath and try and somehow it would have been a pain so thankfully I remembered to put the latch in it's uh, it's now connected up so it should hopefully be doing the job I also went through and taped up all the edges around uh, just to protect the paint, just in case when I'm putting it down, it's going to come down in, uh, you know, trying to get it lined up. So let's go and loosely line up the bonnet and then I can finish off uh, bolting up the lower part of the front end.
Oh, it's so nice to see it coming together. It's uh, it's getting close. I'm going to have to do um, get it up on the hoist and see if I can sort of put some better mounts. At the moment, when I first fit it, fit it up with um, uh, self-tapping screws, and that is not going to be anywhere near secure enough for that uh, fiberglass lip. One good hit, and it'll tear the screws out, and that's uh, all over. So we'll have to do something about that. All right, that was super hairy and <laughs> thankfully there's a little bit of scratching here but um, I can probably airbrush it in. It's not great but uh, it's what happens. So uh, in any case it is, it is still okay. So uh, I'm going to go through now and I'm going to start uh, putting some bolts through this, uh, this bar so that it'll actually uh, hopefully be able to hold together more than it just did. The front end is looking great. Uh, so now it is uh, time for the last job of the day and that is to fit the rear window. We're really getting there on this assembly thing. So um, in any case, this has got the old uh, rubber that's still on here. I'm gonna take this all off, put the new rubber on and install it. And hopefully we are um, we're really getting there. So I've gotten to do a few of these windows now and um, as you might have seen if you've seen the uh, John Lemon series or the uh, 911, I am well versed in putting in these windows. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it, um, generally the way to do it is you get a piece of string and what you're doing is you're running it into the lip all the way around, the lip that actually uh, latches onto the car. When you've got it in the car, you sort of uh, you push the window in and pull the cord out as you go and it sort of peels peels the rubber over the top of the lip and sits in the whole way around that's how you install the windows <laughs> the theory is easy the uh, the practice not necessarily so so um and anyway uh, a good way to put them in is if you get a uh, an old silicon tube and you use this you run the uh, the string into like so you leave it sticking out and then you you can use this to sort of poke into the edge all the way around and a good tip is use a bit of WD-40. It helps um, you uh, slip it in there and get make uh, make this sort of slide into the slot. So I'm going to run around now, put the um, put the string into my window, and then fingers crossed we can put it in and it'll go in first time. That's the plan. Well, that was two attempts and it's almost in. All of the corners are in. Everything is in except for this bit here. I am just uh, too hot and sweaty and tired to do it today. So I might tackle it again when I'm fresh. So uh, that will be it for today. So that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys. The 1994 Formula One season saw the banning of electronic aids such as ABS, active suspension and of course traction control. Benetton came up with a very ingenious loophole that they exploited. 
Instead of an active traction control system working on wheel rotation, they came up with a system to cut the odd spark from the engine using RPM and atmospheric pressures. This limited the engine's power, much like traction control, and the rate of this could be tuned for track conditions. That said, over the race, as conditions change, it could fall out of its ideal power range and not allow enough power or still overcome the grip. It was not technically cheating, but the system was soon banned. And we're back again for more mail time. And today I've got a letter here. It's from M. Parker in Queensland. Hi Jeff, I'm enjoying the 680 build series and I'm also in the process of fixing, rebuilding my 1974 260Z two-seater uh, with it currently pulled apart and cut up living on a rotisserie. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, in close you'll find a couple of Z Shed stickers. The Z Shed is a page a mate and I started that follows our progress on our own Zs. My 260Z and my mate's uh, TT uh, 300ZX and other Z car related things as well as other jobs we tackle helping other mates out with their own projects. Once again, thanks for the videos. Can't wait to see the uh, 680 finish and driving. Cheers, Matt. And he has, um, they made up some really cool stickers. Some cool stickers, so um, let's just chuck them up on the wall. Cool, and as always, if you guys have got anything you want to stick up on the wall or uh, send through to us, just uh, send them through to Home Built by Jeff, PO Box 1520 Barrel, New South Wales, 2576 Australia. It's looking really good. It's uh, finally coming together. I love the fact the front is all bolted up, besides the fact that I scratched it, but no, that's just what I do. It's bringing back a lot of memories of the Porsche. With the, the, the windscreen and like, if you've seen those videos, that was a long, slow, slow process. Yes, I haven't got that back window in yet, but, but I'll get it in. Yeah, it's... It will get in, it's just... It's already a lot easier, break. yeah, than the Porsche. It's quite, it's quite tight in there trying to get in and duck down underneath the window and yeah, it's, there's not a lot of space. Um, <laughs> in any case, that is, um, that is it for this episode, but um, we'll be back for Friday's episode. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the days right this time. Okay, good idea. <laughs> All right. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying the show, and we'll see you on Friday. All right, see you guys. Hello. <laughs> Formula One season. <laughs> this is hard. I think I can do it. You can do it. And on that, 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 that. Awesome. Like, I was like my 50th take. <laughs>